Why am I not able to share my screen, Kalpesh? Host disabled participant screen sharing. Is there a problem? No. Okay. It says host right, disabled. Right yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes, Prabhu. Yes. Making it a little bigger. So that's the word we are trying to speak. Dharamya de yuddha chreyon yad. Dharamya de yuddha chreyon yad. Dharamya de yuddha chreyon yad. Dharmya di yud achreyonya. Okay, no problem. All right, so we'll start uh, reading from Bhagavad Gita. Just wanted to get your tongue twisted with this particular word. This is very, very important, which we'll be discussing today on dharma and also on our karma. So we'll touch these areas today. It's going to be very interesting. Thank you for joining. We'll do our prayers first. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Shrimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai All right so <clears throat> I'll stop the share now. Okay, so what have we done so far in chapter one and what have you read so far? The gist of chapter one in just three lines, what have you understood? Quickly. Yeah, anyone? Come on, come on. Um, first chapter. Prabhu, only first chapter or first and second both? We, have, we haven't finished second chapter, have we? Uh, no, no, what I mean is, so uh, what have we uh, read? No, 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 only chapter one. What is the gist of chapter one in three lines? Simple. Yeah, so I was actually talking on the mute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yes, yes. Chapter one is about, about observing the armies on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Uh, so both, uh, and uh, during, during, during that episode, uh, actually Arjun uh, got into dilemma whether to fight or not. Uh, it's also he got into a vishad yoga and um, and there was a conversation uh, about to start between uh, conversation has already started between Arjun and Krishna and uh, and uh, yeah so uh, it ends with that Arjun is a dilemma whether to fight or not so that is the chapter very nice thank you what is your understanding that's what my question is uh, uh, that no matter how big uh, you are or no matter what your past your achievements are uh, you will be challenged as you as you travel further in your life so get ready <laughs> is that what chapter 1 is yeah because arjun uh, arjun obviously you know be, be, before he landed on to, into the kurukshetra he had killed uh, thousands and i don't know how many thousands he has killed already but but by but by seeing his relatives you know he got so bewildered uh, thinking, you know, what should he do? Whether whether he should fight or he shouldn't fight. You know, he 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 was more into dilemma. So, what is uh, your understanding? What is the main problem with Arjun? He is he's 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 confused with his with his uh, you know with his duty with his nature. You know, whether whether uh, what he should do, whether he should fight or whether he should be you know go go to the jungle and do a big become a big show. Anyone else want to try? Yeah, Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu, basically, chapter first tells, uh, sets up the scene for the war. So <clears throat> uh, here, the Tritrash, like he's representing the attachments to the material things. And Bhishampitama is representing 
uh, our attachments with the mundane relatives and uh, uh, dronacharya our attachment with the knowledge basically for me it is like we have to fight against all these um, our attachments and um, similarly like arjuna is a, is in a dilemma because he's attached to material things material relatives and material knowledge and we also feel the similar thing so it's our fight uh, to get detached from all this and do our duties so this is my understanding from take me here ha ji ha sorry Mahatma, uh, ji. we are soul not hmm. this body okay. in first yeah. chapter they told us i think that is in chapter 2 mata ji but but you are right you are absolutely right that we are the soul we are not this body very nice understanding that's when Dharma, krishna starts when uh, krishna starts speaking to arjun in two Dharma, point he, he told about the dharma kshatriya's dharma is to fight and this. that is in chapter 2 as well so that is what okay. we will discuss yeah 2.3 2.31 yeah. correct correct understanding mata ji but yeah that's a part of chapter 2 thank you yes kalpesh Oh, I, I'll try to give some quick. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Right? Yes, yes, yeah, Shetaj. Yes, please. Yes, okay. concise would be good. Yes. Um, I I foresee that uh, as Arjun is in the situation, we fall in this situation daily. We don't know what our actual dharma is, and he is kind of um, in that same situation where he started lamenting that I don't know what I should do, and uh, you know what decision to take. So so basically, he's uh, he's there. He knows he has to fight. but he is not able to identify himself who he is what is the dharma he should follow at that point of time and and he is saying he is basically giving up that i don't want to fight and he's uh, you know he's kind of lamenting okay. that's the understanding and if we relate to ourselves he is a pure devotee of the lord is what we uh, have read in verse 20 uh, 1.22 where all the signs are showing that he will be victorious but uh, he is still in that dilemma because he is getting more attached to the material world by identifying himself so it's more of the vishad which arjun is doing after seeing all the armies though he knows he has the capability of kshatriya that they will win but he's kind of gone into that uh, state where he is grieving ritambara mata ji do you want to uh, comment something on chapter 1 Uh, yes prabhu ji uh, i would say that uh, first chapter um, will just uh, tell the state of arjun's mind um, who is uh, in great dilemma to seeing in, in the um, intra intra office uh, <clears throat> uh, you know bhishma and all that and he 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 was not his my state of mind was not ready to uh, fight against his own relatives okay thank you yeah so in just yeah kalpesh you want to add thing uh, bhagwat okay. start with a really interesting quote actually you know the first one uh, where it says dhutrashtra uh, uvach dharma kshetre kuru kshetre samaveta yutsava mamaka pandavas chayva kimu kuru sanjay this this uh, this quote is really uh, <coughs> important because uh, firstly it's the first uh, verse of bhagwat gita uh in from here you know it, it tells me that dhritarashtra is so anxious to know uh, what's happening in the kurukshetra that's my understanding and uh, you know uh, he's he, even even he's in a dilemma basically you know and he he is in this situation because uh even being a king you know he he was not able to take instructions nor he was able to give instructions in fact he he was able to just follow his emotions and and take decisions and that's why you know we are in, we are discussing bhagavad gita today so chapter 1 if you read it and uh, you know the observation uh, from various uh, uh various philosophers and various um, thinkers is that you know the first you have to identify and fight your inner war that's the first thing to understand from chapter 1 that we have internal discrepancies which are to be fixed first thing unless 
we win our inner war, we cannot start fighting the outer war. This is the first understanding. And unless we start fighting the outer war, we cannot win the outer war. Very simple, if you put it that way. You know, simple understanding. If you so, if you contemplate on that, that is chapter one. Okay, so Arjun is in that situation where he was never ever, you know, defeated by anyone. Nobody could defeat him. Duryodhan and Karana together could not defeat him. Not any other warrior could defeat him. Duryo, uh, Arjun was literally the best warrior at that time. <clears throat> Favorite student of Dronacharya. Also an excellent warrior who would be so focused on fighting that he would study and understand Dhanurvidya during the day and practice at night. That kind of student he was. So he would not sleep that was Arjun. So his practice was very, very, you know, a high level of practice. An excellent warrior. So that warrior was not defeated by anyone, but defeated by his inner discrepancies. First understanding. So first you have to fight your and win your inner war. And because he was defeated by his inner war, he kept his bow and arrow aside. That's the end of chapter 1. What is the last verse of chapter 1? Uh, Shetich, can you please read? One. 1.46 Sanjay Vacha Evam Uktwarjuna Sankhe Rathopasta Upavistita Visrajasa Saram Chapam Chapam Shoka Samvigna Manasa Visrajasa Saram Chapam Shoka Vigna Manasa So please read the translation. Sanjay said Arjuna, having thus spoken on the battlefield, cast aside his bow and arrows and sat down on the chariot. His mind overwhelmed with grief. So, a warrior like Arjun, so skilled, gave up to fight, kept his bow and arrow aside because of his inner problems. That is the understanding. Okay. Now, we also discussed a few names of Krishna in chapter 1. One of the names was Keshava. We discussed on different names of Krishna. My favorite was Keshava. Also Krishna, of course. What did we discuss about Keshava? Anyone remembers? Kesh. It's basically referring to the killing of the Keshi Keshi demon. demon. Yes. And also there is one more meaning of Keshava. One who has transcendental, beautiful air, Prabhu. Air. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice, Mataji. So one who has beautiful transcendental hair is Keshava. So on the battlefield, <clears throat> when Krishna and Arjun entered, <clears throat> so that and when Arjun was fighting, you know, so and killing all the soldiers later. Yeah. So those soldiers who were dying with Arjun's arrows later, they were looking at the face of 
Krishna. And where were, where is this Kesha word first mentioned? Which verse of chapter 1? Kalpesh, you want to try? There was the first time Keshav mentioned. Or Shitij, or Radha Mataji, anyone? Or Sitambara Mataji? The first time Kesha word was used. Oh, sorry, I was speaking on the mute. Uh, 1.30. This is the first time Kesha was used? Yeah. Okay. What is the translation? 1.30. I'm now unable to stand here any longer. I'm, for, uh, I'm forgetting myself and my mind is reeling. I see only causes of misfortune, O oh Krishna, killer of the Kesi demon. Okay. Before that, anywhere he uses word Keshava? No, I think it's 1.30. Very nice. So, Nacha. Confirm. Shakno me was tatu, Brumuti with a chemana, Nimitani to Pashami, Vipritani, Keshava. So he says Keshava eh, there, and because he is the killer of Keshi demon, he is addressing him that he will kill his demons inside as well, which are causing him this problem. So the other word of Keshava, other meaning of Keshava was with beautiful transcendental hair. So when in Mahabharat, when Arjun was killing uh, all the soldiers, soldiers were dying looking at Krishna. So there's a very beautiful verse in Srimad Bhagavatam. It says, Tathaiva chane naraloka veera yahave krishna mukhara vindam netrai pibanto nayana bhiramam Partha Straputaha Padama Purasya. It says that certainly others who were fighters on the battlefield of Kurukshetra were purified by the onslaught of Arjun's arrows. And while seeing the lotus like face of Krishna so pleasing to the eyes, they achieved the abode of the Lord. So when they were dying, looking at Krishna, they were actually reaching Vaikuntha. So that was the beauty of Krishna that they could not resist seeing him. And because they were seeing Krishna at the time of death, they were automatically getting his abode. We'll understand that later in Bhagavad Gita that whoever thinks about Krishna at the end of his um, life achieves the abode of Krishna. So that was which we had discussed different names of Krishna. Okay, so that was chapter 1. And chapter 2 started with Krishna reprimanding Arjun. Calling him Klebyam. That where have these impurities come upon you? And then Arjun takes a humble position of taking shelter of Krishna. Yeah, He surrenders to him. So humility is, you know, when we take a humble position, humility is when we don't know what to do, we understand and find out what we should do what we can do. So Arjun, at the time when he was totally confused, not knowing what to do, he took that humble position and took shelter of Krishna. And then he left his bow and arrow aside and said, I will not fight. Please guide me, Krishna. I am your disciple now. A soul surrender to you. That's what he says in 0.7. I don't understand dharma. Please guide me. And then Krishna starts speaking Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> now, Krishna is seeing Arjun in a state 
where he is getting stuck between his swabhava, being compassionate, and also being, you know, uh, confused with his dharma. So Krishna will start, he starts making Arjun understand on a higher level first. So he takes that swabhava and swadharma out first, but he starts speaking on his swarupa. So what is our swarupa? Character. Sorry. Character. Character. Swarupa. Our swarupa is that we are not this body. Our actual yeah, no, swarupa. No, swarupa is that we are this soul. So jiva, as we call ourselves, you know, jiva, jiva or soul. Jiva swarupen and nitya Krishna da. So we are part and parcels of Krishna. So when we say we are part and parcel of Krishna, and Krishna himself is Sat Chit Ananda. He doesn't have a material body like us. He is Sat Chit Ananda. So if we are a part of Krishna, a parcel of Krishna, so we have a very minute part of Sat Chit Ananda, which is the soul. And that is nothing but a servant of Krishna. So that is the understanding of our Swarupa. So Krishna speaks on very high level to Arjun, telling him that you are not this body, you are a soul. So he starts speaking that all these kings which are here, they were always there and they will be remaining here. No, always be there because they are not this body, they are souls. And then he explains the characteristics of soul, how it, the soul transmigrates from one body to another. And then he, ex he touches on the concept of the Soul being indestructible, imperishable. He speaks a lot of verses on that. So, why does he speak about the soul? Why is he speaking about the soul? So that to make Arjun understand that this Swabhava and this Swadharma, they are all related to the body. They are not related to the soul. So if you can understand that you are a soul, then you will be able to deal with the Swabhava and the Swadharma. That is why he comes up with a verse in 2.14. He says, what What does he say? Matras prashastu konte ashito shna sukha dukkada aga maapa inu anitya stam So he said, because you are a soul, you should not be lamenting on these bodily issues. You should be dealing with them. What you have to do, you have to control them. Now, bodily senses or bodily temptations, they cannot be retired voluntarily. So there are two kinds of retirements. There is voluntary retirement and then next one is termination. Correct? That's how someone gets retirement from any job, right? Either he voluntarily retires or he's sacked from the work. With the bodily senses, there is no voluntary retirement. There is no voluntary retirement. Ek sense shant hoga, dusara sense shal ho jayega. Abhi skin ka you need some companion. Wo shant hua to you need something to eat. Wo shant hua to something to drink. Wo shant hua to something to go around, watch the world. Wo shant hua to do something else. The senses will always be active. Ye retar nahi honge kabhi. So there is no way the senses will retire voluntarily. So there, is, there needs to be a force in order to terminate these senses. People say that, yaar, maza hai, to kyun kare? <laughs> Haan, karo. But the problem is that they will never retire. And why should they retire? Why should they be retired? 
why should they be forced to terminate? Why? Anyone? Yes, Kalpesh. Okay. Why should they be retired? That's that's a question on I have is like, what do you mean by force? Why should we forcefully, you know, retire senses which are not yeah. I'm asking you, why should we retire the senses? No, but if they're not in, if they're not indulging into someone else's privacy. No, then... no, no. I'm not talking about else's privacy. I'm mm -hmm. talking about your own senses. There is no one else involved. Just your own senses. Why so should they be retired? That is not the sense gratification. Okay. Kya ka man kiya? Rasgulla. Haan. Rasgulla, prasad mila, ek rasgulla kaya hai. Hmm. Constantly rasgulla can't control. I have to eat a lot of rasgullas. That is called sense gratification. Okay. Rasgulla ke bina agar jee sakte ho, that is called sense gratification. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Oh, that sense gratification. Mila to khaliya. Mil gaya. To khaliya aapne wo baat alag hai. Lekin wo bhi sirf rasgulla hai. Not all the other senses can be satisfied like that. Mil gaya to kar liya. Aisa nahi chalta har kisi mein. It doesn't work like that. So senses. Aisa to. There is no end. But why they should be retired? My question is that. My question is not that. That what you should do. When the senses is that. Why they should be retired? because then we cannot get out of the bondage of karma. Exactly. We cannot get out of this material body. We cannot go to the higher level of the soul. No problem. If you're happy with that, be there. That is the issue, basically. People like that. So Krishna will explain further. This is Dukkhale Mashashatam. This world is a hospital. Yaha pe Australia mein bhi hospital hai. Khana achcha milta hai wahan pe. Iska matlab ye nahi hai ki hospital mein rehna hai humko khana khane ke liye. Try to understand. Udhar se thik ho ke nikalna hai. That is the idea of material world. That you are here to get out. Not to stay here. Okay. It doesn't mean that you have to suicide, you know, kill yourself. No. The idea is so that this is a journey. This is a bridge I have to cross over. That is the idea. So if you consider this as a journey, a journey for a spiritual self-realization. higher access. Unfortunately. Ye krapa humans ko mili isili human birth mangte sab log. You know, devatas also, demigods also will read in Bhagavad Gita. They also pray that I should get a human birth so that I can chant the holy names of Krishna and leave this material world. So there has to be a force in order to restrict your senses. So when we think about it, we have to convert our thoughts to divert our thoughts to our thoughts and divert our thoughts to our thoughts to our thoughts. That we will talk in a few moments now. Okay. So that is the understanding. Okay. So what what was the topic we started with? 2.14. That was where we were. Correct. So matras prashasu. So these temptation turbulences and the situations in your life, they are like only sparsha. They are like summer and winter. They'll come and they'll go away. What you should do? You should learn how to tolerate them. Right? If you learn how to tolerate them only, then you will go on the higher level of understanding your own self, which is the soul. Yes, Kalpesh. Prabhuji, you have to sense gratification in a detail. What do you want to understand? You know, you know I, I, I said, like, you know, if you want to eat a rasgulla, then you don't have an issue. You shouldn't be living to, to eat rasgulla, you know. So, uh, can you give some more examples? So, can you give some more examples? So, say for example, you want to do such a you want to drink, you know, somebody likes to drink alcohol. Okay, unless so I have a very dear friend of mine who, who loved to drink alcohol, like love to smoke cigarettes. Until he got heart attack badly at the age of 40, early 40s, he didn't give up. You know, literally he was carried in the Ambulance at night, he had to call triple zero and they picked him up and he went there. 
नहीं 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 अभी मैं नहीं अभी मैं मैं पीऊंगा सिगरेट को हाथ भी लगाऊंगा सो दैट इज बाय फोर्स बट नॉट बाय योर ओन फोर्स बाय एक्सटर्नल फोर्सेस और बॉडी जवाब नहीं दे गई द बॉडी के नॉट सस्टेन सो दैट इज वन वे Your senses will be, but what are you doing after that? So, what should be done in order to satisfy your senses? That we will discuss later. Okay. Prabhu, so, do not. Uh, sorry, yeah. Prabhu. I think Agnesh Prabhu is asking why we need to control our senses. Yeah, yeah. That is so what we will discuss. Prabhu, like yeah, you know, that Prabhu. is what. That is what we will discuss later. Why we want I, to control senses? I I I have understood kind of why, but I have not understood the degree of sense of gratification. Like you know, I I got good clarification from this example of of your uh, the example that you gave about your friend. You know, who probably kept drinking and smoking, and until he uh, screwed up his health, you know, he got hospitalized. He realized that this is something not right for him. uh so yeah so basically uh, you shouldn't be uh, you shouldn't be getting adapted to uh, you know uh, uh, wrong doings why we are we are doing this why we are stopping our senses to be in control why we are organizing our senses to be in control so that we can come out of this material bondage what is the material bondage this body this body is the material bondage mm -hmm. the arjun is stuck in this body he is only thinking about his swabhav his swadharma in terms of relationships in terms of this so what is his argument the argument kya hai two arguments from arjun agar main mar gaya to mar gaya to kya hoga mere ko kuch mila nahi gaya i don't know lekin agar main jeet gaya और सबको मार के जीत गया तो हुम आई विल एंजॉय विद ऐसा बोलता है वो सो कृष्णा सिंह दैट इज नॉट द वे ऑफ थिंकिंग अनफॉर्चुनेटली मोस्टली सब लोग ऐसे सोचते हैं दैट इज द बॉडीली कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लाइफ सो टू टेक हिम आउट ऑफ द बॉडीली कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लाइफ कृष्णा स्पोकन भगवत गीता बेसिकली टू टेक अस आउट ऑफ द बॉडीली कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लाइफ so we have this bodily concept of life ki agar zindagi hai to maza karna hai mar gaye to sab khatam aur agar sab log mar gaye aur mere paas bahut sare opulences aage to main enjoy kiske sath karunga samajh mein aa rahi hai baat hmm that is arjun's question who oh, sailing in the same boat as we are nothing different so krishna is taking him out of that trying to take him out on a higher level which is the soul he says that we are not this body the soul so there is no relationship if the soul is unique and eternal so koi relationship nahi hai relationship sirf body ka hai to agar higher level pe sochoge to hi isko control kar paoge nahi to body ke hi level pe agar sochoge to kuch nahi hai sab theek hai khana peena bhi theek hai meat khana bhi theek hai illicit sex bhi theek hai gambling bhi theek hai sab sahi hai आप उसमें कितनी डिग्री है वो हमको क्या पता वो डिग्री बढ़ाते जाओ डेली तुम दैट इज कॉल्ड यूफमिज्म यू नो व्हाट इज यूफमिज्म एनीवन विशाखा यस व्हाट इज यूफमिज्म यूफमिज्म इज अम समथिंग व्हिच इज वेरी हार्श व्हेन यू से दैट इन अ माइल्ड वे वेरी नाइस दैट इज यूफमिज्म एंड आई कैन गिव एग्जांपल्स आल्सो श्योर लाइक इंस्टेड ऑफ सेइंग अम he died you say he passed away very nice right. yeah very good very good well read vishaka well done <laughs> so if you see the movies in today's times and if you compare those movies with the 80s and 90s i hope every one of you uh, not all i'm not sure would have seen the movies you know in 80s and 90s vulgarity was quite less at that time you know a simple mm. you know a closeness of a male and female was considered to be you know really very mm. big thing in those times but now it is very common so what has happened over a period of time they have slowly slowly showed you everything and now that has become normal that's called euphemism dheere dheere dikhate hain tumko subtle way mein koi cheeze और धीरे धीरे करके बढ़ाते जाते हैं उसको 
So bad things in slow. So that is a degree you're talking about Kalpesh. So if say for example, today you are not drinking, but tomorrow some friend tells you, yeah, have a little sip of whiskey. That's all right. He says, okay, yaar. Ek 10 ml mein kya jata hai? That's okay. You know, subtle. I'll hold the drink. Mm -hmm. 10 ml mein 2 ghande tak chala hoonga usko. धीरे 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 करके वो 100 ml हो जाता है over a period of time ऐसे नहीं बोल रहा हूँ next day वो 100 ml पीता है वो एक साल में हो जाता है वो because how does the mind work mind works like this that's how that the Bollywood Hollywood ये ऐसे चल रहा है सब that's how they are functioning that that's how they play with the minds that's how the euphemism in the world is going on that's how media works तो so media ऐसे चलता है पहले तुमको ये पिक्चर दिखाएगा धीरे धीरे और को बढ़ाएगा थोड़ा और स्कोर बढ़ाएगा फिर बढ़ाते बढ़ाते और डार्क कर देगा उस चीज को नाउ अ डेज यू कैन नॉट सी थिंग्स ऑन यू नो नेटफ्लिक्स और Amazon और एनीथिंग डर्टी दैट इज यूफेमिज्म एंड पीपल फाइंड इट नॉर्मल इट्स ओके ठीक है चलता है पहले अगर यही चीज आपको 80s में दिखाते ना हम लोग तो अरे ये तो बहुत खतरनाक है अभी चलता है ये क्या हुआ है This is euphemism. Is it making sense? This is called the degree. ये senses ऐसे काम करते हैं हमारे। ये चलते ही जाएंगे, बढ़ते ही जाएंगे, और चाहिए उसको। So the senses cannot be voluntarily retired. They have to be forced to be taught. That's the that's that's what Bhagavad Gita says. Unless you forcibly Stop the senses. They will never, never, never stop. Does it make sense, Kalpesh? Yeah. Okay. So, what has to be done with this? Matras prashastu. This has to be Tamsitikshasva Bharata. So, he says, you are coming from a dynasty of Bharat. So, that values something. So when someone comes from a certain family, you know, a lineage, there is some expectation from him. Yes? Correct? You know, everybody would want him to act like a prince. Yeah, so if he's coming from a Bharat dynasty, Krishna is telling him, you are coming from the dynasty, you should be acting like one on a very high level. You should be able to handle these things from the from the senses perspective. So when Arjun, uh, you know, uh, in the battlefield, after, you know, finishing Mahabharata, Arjun went and, uh, you know, got his solace and, uh, you know, uh, took his next Vanaprastha and other, you know, stages of life. He had his son also called Abhimanyu. Everybody knows? His son called Abhimanyu. He left his body during the battle of Mahabharata. And then, there was Abhimanyu's son. His name was Maharaj Parikshit. Do you know? Okay. So Maharaj Parikshit was Abhimanyu's son. So he was the grandson of Arjun. So Maharaj Parikshit was cursed by a sage that he will die in seven days. That's how Srimad Bhagavatam was written. So he was cursed by a sage that he will die in seven days by a particular snake. So he was sure to die within seven days. So he went to Sukadev Goswami. Actually, he didn't go to Sukadev Goswami. Actually, Sukadev Goswami somehow came in contact with him to give Srimad Bhagavatam knowledge before he dies. So, so uh, Parishit Maharaj, he says that in Srimad Bhagavatam. And he started that, Api me Bhagavan Prita. Krishna Pandu Sutah Priya Paitra Swaseya Pritartham Tat Gotrayata Bandhava. He says that he tells Sukhudeva Goswami, How come you have come to this place, you know, to give me this knowledge without even asking? How have you come right in front of me? I'm about to die in seven days. How come you? This is grandson of Arjun. 
So Sukadev Goswami replies to him that he says, Lord Krishna, the personality of Godhead who is very dear to the sons of King Pandu, has accepted me as one of those relatives just to please his great cousins and brothers. <clears throat> so, so Parishit Maharaj is saying that. You know, so what happens is that that Krishna, when someone takes, you know, shelter of Krishna, what happens? He takes care of his family and relatives as well. So when Parikshit Maharaj wanted a lot of help at the time, Krishna appeared and came to in the form of Sukadev Goswami and imparted knowledge to him. Not in the form of Sukadev Goswami, but he guided Parishit Maharaj to take shelter and understand Srimad Bhagavatam. So when someone takes shelter of Krishna, someone takes shelter of uh, the Lord, he personally takes care of all his family and relatives, keeps an eye on them and takes care of all his relatives and families. I remember once one of our very senior devotees was talking about it. He says that his family members were always, you know, a little upset on he taking to bhakti and becoming a brahmachari and going living in the temple. But when they heard a lecture like this, one of his cousins came and told him, please keep chanting huh, because I will be benefited. <laughs> Krishna will take care of me. <laughs> so you please continue chanting. And if anyone disturbs you, tell me, I will take care of him. <laughs> so, if you want, that is another understanding from these verses of Sri Bhada Bhagavatam, that if we want that our family should be taken care of, our parents should be taken care of, we have to take shelter of Krishna. If we take care of, care of, if we take shelter of Krishna, he takes care of you and your family, personally, even when you are not there. So Arjuna took shelter of Krishna. Krishna took, uh, took care of him. Even after Arjun and Abhimanyu died, he took care of their grandson. So this is the understanding. Make sense? Making sense? Yeah? Good. So 2.14, Bharata. Then Krishna further explains about the soul until 2.26 when he says that even if you think that soul perishes or dies, even then you don't have to Lament, continue fighting. Yeah, and after that he says the amazing verse, which is two point twenty. Which is the amazing verse? Two point twenty nine. Ascharyavat. Yeah. yeah, very good. And two point thirty he concludes on the understanding of soul. So today we will read. 2.31, which is a long pending verse from a long time. So now Krishna will come down to the level of Swadharma. Mm. So what he was talking on? Swarupa as a soul, so that you can control your Swadharma based on the bodily concept of life. You can manage your body. Now he's coming down to explain him the Kshatriya Dharma. Because Arjun said that, how will he enjoy if he kills everyone? So Krishna comes down to that level to explain him. So 2.31 and 32, he will explain him what are the benefits of doing your own duty or dharma as a Kshatriya. And from 33 to 37, he will explain him what are the losses if he doesn't do Kshatriya dharma. Okay, so we'll read from 2.31 till 37 now at a stretch. We'll constantly keep on reading this verse and please read the translation. Okay. I'll share my screen with you and we will go on reading verse by verse. You able to see my screen? Yes? yes. Everyone? Okay. Yes. Swadharma picha veksha. Swadharma picha veksha. <clears throat> Navikampitum arhasi. 
ಶ್ರಿಯಸ್ಯನಿದ್ಯತೆ ಸ್ವಧರ್ಮ so this is very important swadharma so what is your dharma is kshatriya dharmya di yuddha chreyon yat this means that doing your duty or your occupational duty for religious principles yeah there is no better engagement than that yeah that's your doing your occupational so swadharma yeah so what is what are the different uh, so this is swadharma is by your nature nature so krishna has provided so krishna has divided the nature of people the occupational uh, you know nature of people into four categories which is varna that is brahman kshatriya vaishya and shudra so this is the major no se- segregation there is no upper and lower in this one this is the nature of people how do they want to work if they want to you know have their occupational uh, duty to serve you no know, rather than you know being uh, a leader then they are considered the, into the shudra category it's nothing bad okay then vaishya is someone who likes to deal with business, in business you know more uh, into vyapar so that is vesh and Vesh. then merchandising so, and then you have kshatriya kshatriyas are administrators leaders so they, that's the nature of a person and then there is brahman 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 is mainly attracted towards Teaching. preaching activities mainly towards reading scriptures activities and also on spiritual realization so these are the main activities of a brahman now all these four have a duty to perform in terms of their stages in life so 0 to 25 the stage of life considered to be a brahmachari wherein they study you study you know everything and try to learn and try to earn as well by your own self and also there is a restriction in terms of your uh what do you call your life in terms of having a strict way of life after 25 this consider you can step into a grahastha life 25 to 50 so these are the ashramas that is stages of the life so a, a brahman can go into the four stages of life which is in different ashrama a kshatriya can be in the four ashrama a vaishya can be and a shudra also can be yeah so based on the nature they do their work but everyone has to go through these different ashramas if at all someone doesn't want to go into grahastha ashram that is a different case he remains a brahmachari throughout or someone takes a sanyas right from the beginning also he remains a sanyasi throughout so that is also possible yeah so that is based on your nature now what is that krishna also explains that too so what is their swadharma yeah swadharma so you have to identify your nature as to what you are regularly inclined towards so the understanding is given in chapter 18 also which is which which sorry 18.47 18 chapter he you know explains swabha niyatam karma kurvan aap noti kilbisham so the swabhava niyatam so swabhava niyatam regular swabhava 
It's not just that one fine morning you feel like doing business. That's not your swabhava. Yeah, one fine morning you feel like, you know, being an administrator or a leader. That is not your swabhava. What are you constantly engaged in? That is your swabhava. Yeah, sorry. What you are constantly engaged in, that is your swadharma. So what swabhava you have regular. So swabhava nityam is your occupational duty. So you should work in your swabhava nityam karma. Kurvan naapnoti kilbisham. So Krishna says in chapter 18 that duties prescribed according to one's nature are never affected by sinful reactions. You will not incur papa if you do those duties according to your nature, according to your swabhava. Yeah, and karma has two ways. So one is the action, yeah, and that is next is karma yoga. So there is two different things. Karma yoga means when you act for the pleasure of Krishna, and karma kanda is that when you act for the pleasure of your own self. These are different things. It's very deep. These are also known as Sakama Karma Yoga and the other one is called Karma Yoga. Okay? Sakama Karma Yoga means Karma Kanda. When you do something to enjoy. That is your that is called your occupational duty. And when you are able to perform an act for the pleasure of the Lord, perform the duty Pleasure to for the pleasure of Krishna, it becomes karma yoga. That's what you Anyone who doesn't understand this concept, the next chapter, chapter three, karma yoga, ye pura iske upar based hai. Or deep jang usme. Yeah, it's very interesting. If you understand this, then Bhagavad Gita will be like. You know, very smooth sailing ahead. Uh, could you please repeat that again? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Is someone else also speaking? No, I... Apart I'm... from Mataji. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah. Mataji. So, there are two things. There is your swabhava, niyatam, karma, which you are, your nature, in which you do your occupational duty. You can be a Brahman, you can be a Kshatriya or a Vaishya or a Shudra. Now, when you act, when you do your actions, when you do something... For the pleasure of your own self, that is called Sakama Karma Yoga or Karma Kand. But when you do the same duty for the pleasure of Krishna, it becomes Karma Yoga. Okay? All right. So now we will continue reading from this. Now, if you do your duty as a Kshatriya, Krishna says that what will be your uh, uh, what do you call what will you gain out of it so I'll share my screen with you please repeat after me can you see my screen 2.32 yes. yeah yes yadra chaya chopa pannam yadra chaya chopa pannam swargadwaram apavritam Sukhinaha Shatriya Partha Sukhinaha Shatriya Partha Labhante Yuddham Idrasham Labhante Yuddham Idrasham Can someone read the translation, please? O Partha, happy are the Shatriyas to whom such fighting opportunities come unsought. Opening for them the doors of the heavenly planets. So Krishna says that if you perform your duties as a Kshatriya, you will attain Swarga. Okay. So we'll read the next. Now, two point thirty-three. Please repeat after me. Atha chetatvam imam dharmyam. Atha chetatvam imam dharmyam. Sangramam na karishyasi. Sangramam na karishyasi. 
ततः स्वधर्म कीर्तन चोरी ततः स्वधर्म कीर्ति हिवा पापम अवाप्यसी read the translation so what if however you do not perform your religious duty of fighting then you will suddenly incur sins for neglecting your duties and thus lose your reputation as a fighter so this is the opposite thing oh not doing it so now krishna it. explained that 31 and 32 explains that what will be good now this is something will happen if you do not do your duty Yeah. So, yeah. We'll read the next verse. Thirty-four. Akir tim chapi bhutani. Akir tim chapi bhutani. Katha yeshanti te avyayam. Katha yeshanti te avyayam. Tamba vitasya chakirti. ऑनरसन People will always speak of your infamy, and for respectable person, this honor is worse than that. So, what is equivalent to death or worse than death? Dishonor, Dishonor. for a person who is a respectable person. Do you re recollect of the past time we had discussed some time back, where Arjun was trying to kill Yudhishthir? Yes. What did Krishna tell him? to disrespect him disrespectfulness oh. or dishonor is worse than death so this is what krishna is telling here as well yeah, for a respectable person dishonor is worse than death so be careful krishna is telling you know so even for us we have to keep on doing your our duty yeah or occupational duty भयाद्रणादुपरत भूतवायाघव Translation: The great generals who have highly esteemed your name and fame will think that you have left the battlefield out of fear only, and thus they will consider you insignificant. So you see, this is the outlook you will carry if you do not do your duty. That is, that implies to everyone. everyone people think that you are insignificant if you do not do your duty so no matter what how does this happen the first of all identify your own nature swabhava niyatam what is that something you do regularly and if you are able to identify then you will be able to perform your duty very nicely but be careful here what is that be careful of performing the duty correctly as per your nature if at all you say you are a brahman and you start doing the activities of kshatriya there may be repercussions okay now i will just stop sharing here and i will tell you the verse where krishna explains this very clearly so that is in chapter 3 verse 35 he says shreyan swadharmo vigunah paradharmat sanushtita 
स्वधर्मे निधनम श्रेय पर धर्मो भयाव दिस इज वन ऑफ द वर्स विच वॉज पिकड अप बाय अ वेरी स्मॉल कंट्रीज ऑर्गनाइजेशन वेरी वेरी स्मॉल इनसिग्निफिकेंट ऑलमोस्ट ऑन द मैप्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड that organization picked up this verse and today's times that organization is the best in their own area do you want to know what name of, what's the name of their organization the singapore airlines singapore airlines yeah <laughs> so this is shared by one of our very very deep philosophical uh, sanyasi bhakti rasayan maharaj so he explained us in the lecture because he knows a lot of corporate people He explained us that this particular verse has been adopted by this certain organization, and they went from where to where just with one verse of Bhagavad Gita. Shreyan swadharmo vigunaha paradharma swanushtitat swadharme nidhanam shreya paradharmo bhayavah. It says it is far better to discharge one's prescribed duties, even though faultily, than another's duties perfectly. It says, "Shreyan swadharmo vigunah paradharma swanushtita." Shreyan, Shreyan means it is better. Shreyan swadharmo vigunah, that it is okay to perform your own duty imperfectly. Galat salat bhi karte ho, lekin as per your nature, agar tum kam kar rahe ho, na occupational duty, that is okay. It is better than paradharma swanushtita. it is better than doing someone else's duty perfectly say for example you are good at you know a lower stuff like you know doing some kind of uh, you know uh, accountancy work or doing some uh, engineering work some kind of professional work but you are a man you are not a manager say for example you don't have the quality of a manager but if you try to become a manager you know and do that perfectly wo dangerous hai because you are good at something else you are good at engineering you are good at something else you know so do not try to do those things even though if you are able to do perfectly that was krishna saying try to stick to your own nature or your, your own kind of occupation work why says that swadharme nidhanam shreya that even swadhane sorry swadharme nidhanam shreya it is better to fail or not do that great or even not you know gain that much by doing your own natured work swadharne swadharme nidhanam shreya it is better to be even in loss by doing your own natured occupational duty then paradharmo bhayavah if you do someone else's duties it is dangerous Okay, very powerful verse. It is a very powerful verse. It is chapter three, verse thirty-five. Yes, Kalpesh. How did how did they apply this in in their company? How do they apply this in the company? I just give an example. What are you good at? What is your swabhava niyatam? What is something that pulls you or drives you? Is your nature? Krishna says in chapter eighteen. Now that is. divided into four categories as per the scriptures but you know better what are you yeah does the singapore airlines uh, help employees to identify their nature no, no i don't know the micro level of that but they did their own duty that's what i'm trying to say okay so if you see an organization if they stick to their own principles and their own kind of work without doing anyone else copying anyone else basically i understand that that you may observe others and pick up good qualities but do not try to do someone else's kind of a work don't just replicate what someone else is doing don't do what others are doing do not try to copy someone else's dharma find out your own swabhav niyatam dharma and your own occupational duty where do you fit that and do it perfectly 
Even if you incur loss in that, you continue doing that. You will be successful one day. That's what Krishna says. Prabhuji, in, in this is a fast-paced world, right? Yeah. Where, where, where days pass really very fast. And it's very difficult to identify your own, own nature. Mm. So how do we wait and watch and not do the things that we have on the plate at the moment? Krishna can help you identify your nature very quickly. Do you take shelter of Krishna? That is the first question. Or do we try to find out who are we with our own self? That's another problem. There are many deep philosophers who speak about your nature. Real nature comes out when you are put under tremendous stressful circumstances. Your real nature comes out at that time. Your real self comes out at that time. What are you? A good manager will not get stressed. He will handle the situation. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes? Absolutely correct. He will not get stressed. Lal Pila Kala Oge wo manager nahi. He doesn't know how to manage. Wo shatriya nahi. Wo dar gaya wo shatriya nahi. Correct? Stressful situations mein dar gaya aur nahi act kar paya wo shatriya nahi hai. He's not an administrator. He's not a manager. Loss ki wajay se dar gaya business mein wo vaishya nahi hai. Correct. Kaam nahi mila to rone lag gaya bilkul. Aray, mere paas bilkul kaam nahi hai. Kuch karne ke liye nahi hai. Kuch shudra nahi hai. <laughs> Sorry, wo shudra hai. <laughs> Correct. Kyunki usko kaam chahiye khali karne ke liye. <laughs> so I have, these are observations. Someone who just he doesn't care and you know continuously he is I've seen many like Brahmanical qualities in people who does don't have anything. They will continuously do the same. That is Brahmana. nature ghumphirke kam karega. That is nature of a person. उससे कुछ फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा उसकी बीवी गाली देगी उसको तो घर पे कुछ लेके नहीं आता खाना नहीं मिलता हमको ये नहीं Have you heard about Sant Tukaram? <laughs> you know everybody knows Tukaram? Yes, yes, yes. Tukaram? तो गन्ने का खेत था गन्ने का पता है महाराष्ट्र में गन्ने का खेत था उसको बड़ी वजह ब्राह्मण मैं नेचर वो सब दे दिया उसको तो को सब दे दिया खेत वीत बहुत था उसके पास बट ही वाज ब्राह्मण he was not a Vaishya. He was not a Vaishya. He was not a Vaishya. So, he was He would just go and he will chant the holy names of Panduranga. He will always be in Vithala. He will always do the chanting of the holy names. He was always like that. So, one day, his wife got very angry. What is this? You know, you should go to that uh, field. Go to the 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 field. He said, जाता हूँ गया वो पूरा गन्ने का खेत काट के वो बैलगाड़ी में लेके आ रहा था आते 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 घर पे पहुँचा तो एक ही गन्ना था खाली बैलगाड़ी में <laughs> उसकी वाइफ बोलती इतने सारे गन्ने काट के किधर गए सब वो बोलता है बिचारे यू नो बीच बीच में भक्त मिल रहे थे मुझे वो लोग भूखे पैसे तो मैं उनको काट काट वो देते जा रहा था सबको बांटता जा रहा था यहाँ पे आते आते खाली एक ही गन्ना मिला बचा है मेरे पास वो गन्ना तोड़ के उसकी बीवी ने उसको बहुत मारा था <laughs> but that is a Brahman. He's very compassionate. He's like, you know, giving to everyone. He can't stop. I know he has to perform his grasp, which he which ultimately Krishna helped him. If you read about Tukaran, you'll be amazed. You know, he all he did was he wrote his Abhangas. All he did was he praised the Lord in front, and Krishna reciprocated to him. They got all the, the richest, richy rich. He went to Vaikuntha. Got the topmost abode of the Lord. That is that is not, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about Treta or Dwapar Yuga. I'm talking about Kali Yuga. Hmm. Pushpak Viman came from Vaikuntha. So, so this is all, so 
how would so everyone krishna that's why he says you do as per your nature work as per your nature so that is your nature you find out what what can you do aapke uh, life mein bahut sari cheeze aa gayi hongi you may be a, you know son of a businessman but you may be a brahman inside wo wo aapko bar bar kar dega wo hi mann karega aapko you know swabhav aisa hai so that's that's how you so krishna is very clearly saying that you perform your occupation so here in this context arjun is a kshatriya he has to fight he cannot say no to fighting and he says that if you fight dharmya 230 dharmya what was the word which we recited in the beginning so many times dharmya yuddh dharma yudhyasi sreyonyat dharma yudhya sreyonyat means if you do your dharma as per the religious principles yeah then there is no problem yeah So dharma, so do you perform your occupational duty as per the religious principles, as per your occupational duty, swadharma. Understood this one clearly? So when I am here, pura. Yeah, good. So we will quickly do thirty six and thirty seven. Sorry. Um, Thirty, yeah, thirty-five. We were, na. So thirty-six and thirty-seven. I'll share my screen, and then we will do the next one from next week. Yeah. So that is thirty-five. We read thirty-five. <coughs> thirty-seven now. Thirty-six now. <clears throat> निंदन्तस्तवसामर्थ्यम् तत्तो दुखतरामनुकिम् तत्तो दुखतरामनुकिम् Mm. Translation. Your enemies will describe you in many unkind words and scorn your ability. What could be more painful for you? Yeah, so he's saying that this is this this the repercussions if we don't perform your swadharma. I'll read to point thirty-seven now. हतो वा प्राप्स्यसी स्वर्ग हतो वा प्राप्स्यसी स्वर्ग जित्वा वा भोक्ष्यसे महि जित्वा वा भोक्ष्यसे महि तस्माद् उत्तिष्ठ कौन्तेय तस्माद् उत्तिष्ठ कौन्तेय युद्धाय कृत निश्चय युद्धाय कृत निश्चय translation please o son of kunti either you will be killed on the battlefield and attain the heavenly planets or you will conquer and enjoy the earthly kingdom therefore get up with determination and fight do you know whose favorite verse this is one of the very very um known warriors of india in kaliyuga it would be a favorite verse of many but one of the warriors favorite verse is this any guesses alexander <laughs> alexander is not indian. indian oh sorry sorry i mean who came to india no 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 acha indian yeah, indian warriors yes shivaji maharaj shivaji no not shivaji maharaj of course shivaji maharaj was a great warrior yeah but this is someone else who had said that Would you? Shivaji. Would you Maharana Pratap? No, 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 no. Okay. Now I'll give you a hint. I think you'll be able to give that answer. Who in there? It was it. It's a not a male. Not a male. Chansi ki ra. Chansi ki ra. Straight forward. Oh my God! Yes. That was came to my mind first. But... Yeah. 
so she said when the english came to her and told her to vacate jhansi and it will be under the english kingdom uh, english rule and they will pay her 5000 rupees every month to maintain her own self this was and she replied with this hato va prapsasi swarga jitva va bhokshase mahim tasma uttishtha kaunte yuddhaya krit nischaya and she said replied to the english people that i don't i know that i have a very small army of mine but i will not succumb to your things i know you are cruel people you are dirty people you are demons so i will fight with you until the last breath of mine that was rani ki jaise you know all these goosebumps they just come up you know no hair just stand up this kind of warriors we have in india and she didn't succumb to that she fought till the last breath she she so we were in um, i think last december yeah i was in jhansi i was just wanting to see where she actually jumped from that the, her her horse you know carrying her child she jumped from the top of that um that fort till down you will be amazed to see that it is like so i mean so so much on top and she jumped from there and she you know fought with those people and she ran <laughs> with her child so yeah yeah some of these powerful verses you know give that kind of uh, energy you know for the kshatriyas to act so this is something for us sorry sorry manakarnik movie it's shown prabhu ji is it i have not seen the movie i have not seen the movie no yeah. so good that that means i have picked up from the right uh, you know sources yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so if you get a chance to visit jhansi you should visit there you know they have a very nice show also there on the fort as well so they have a like you know big fort and they screen that show on that fort it's an amazing place you know to visit prabhu so, my mother has gone to jhansi and I seen see. this place yeah it's it's wonderful <laughs> it's wonderful very very empowering you know you feel a lot of strength when you go to these places <laughs> yeah 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 so we'll end our discussion here 2.37 is the is the last one so this is he's talking about sakama karma yoga okay so this is 31 to 37 now we will krishna will speak about nishkama karma yoga this is another concept so these are the concepts you and try to differentiate them so sakama karma yoga is when you do your occupational duty to get some fruits now when what do you do with those fruits will make it a karma yoga or will make it a karma kand don't me ara kya bol raha hu yes prabhu sakama karma yog activity when you do anything to gain the fruits is called sakama karma yog but when you use that how do you use that fruit of oh, that God. it defines whether it is a karma yog or it's a karma kand okay yeah. all right thank you very much Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Thank Krishna. you, Prabhu, for the beautiful class. Hare Thank Krishna. you, everyone. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, next week. Sorry, next week we have Kirtan, right? Yes. Yes. Prabhu, what time is it? Kalpesh Prabhu will tell everyone. I think six p.m. is the is the main guy. Yeah. Six p.m. on Saturday. Six p.m. Okay. Please try to be on time, everyone, so that we can, you know, do more and more Kirtan. Anyway, I think Kalpesh will send further details. Okay, okay, sure, we'll do, Prabhu Ji. Okay, so twenty ninth is our kirtan Saturday. Yeah. All right. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna.